key lending rate is still high as Bank of Ghana keeps policy rates at 30%. The 30% is still on the high. We hope that it comes down, but it's all depend on easing in the inflationary pressures in the country. Also, Mobile Money Agents Association encourages governments to further reduce e-levy rates to improve financial inclusion. Reduce the rate to 0.5. We hope that by close of year 2024, we should be able to transact up to 5 trillion. Plus, Tanker Owners Union of Ghana laments the influx of some 300 tanker trucks by Chinese companies to undertake transportation of petroleum products. Nobody is going to convince us to give in to. There will be no concession anywhere. We are not going to agree on anything. They have built a refinery. They are going into haulage. The next thing you see, they are, they are buying petrol stations. My name is Menu Afo. We'll bring you the details of our headlines and many other stories shortly. Thank you for staying with us. In our first story, Professor of Finance Williams Pepra insists the country's key lending rate is still high as Bank of Ghana keeps policy rates at 30%. The central bank kept the rates, citing lower inflation and relatively strong economic growth. It's given an indication that um, going forward in the next quarter, um, rates will, will also be maintained in terms of what the banks will be um, charging on their loans. Um, it, it will probably give a little confidence in the economy for businesses to be able to plan very well. Um, so if you have a straight away a six months where your um, interest rate is not being changed, it probably helps you to, to overcome your pricing and also be able to determine um, what happens in the future. But as we said, um, the 30% is all still on the higher side. We hope that it comes down, but it's all depend on easing in the inflationary pressures in the country. The best option is to probably get to the single, single digits or around um, 10 to 15%, but we are not yet there yet because of the um, fiscal challenges that we have in the country and also the debt burdens. So we're hoping that um, inflation rates uh, should, should drop a little bit and then uh, I'm sure we will see the monetary policy rate also coming down. Now that was Professor of Finance at Michigan University, Williams Pepra, there. In more stories, Mobile Money Agents Association has urged government to further reduce e-levy rates to improve financial inclusion. Total mobile money transactions have hit a record 1.190 trillion cities in the first eight months of 2023. A similar figure achieved at the end of 2022. Evan Sotunfo is the General Secretary of Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana. Consumers are actually understanding the convenience that it comes with the usage of mobile money as a major uh, tool for transacting for goods and businesses. Again, it's also just revealing to us that uh, through the agent network, we've really had enough uh, coverage of mobile money services. Advancing at other platforms are yes, um, consumers are actually really sensitive to price. And so government should consider reducing the rates and we are going to really experience some higher uptake. And just the data has come to uh, prove that. So it means that if government takes the bold decision to actually reduce the rate to uh, 0.5. In fact, the figures that we are experiencing now, we hope that by close of year 2024, we should be able to transact up to 5 trillion before the bottlenecks are taken off the platform. That was General Secretary of Mobile Money Agents Association of Ghana, Evans Otumfo. Away from that, Tanka Owners Union of Ghana has reviewed about 300 tanker trucks have so far been imported into the country by Chinese companies to undertake transportation of petroleum products. According to Executive Secretary of the Union, Ignatius Ignatius Kokudo, the influx of these tanker trucks will collapse local fuel haulage businesses. Speaking to three business, Ignatius Do said 
Although his outfit has informed the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, the regulator is here to take a concrete step. He underscored the risk of collapse of local haulage businesses if stakeholders do not take immediate action. Nobody is going to convince us to give in to. There will be no concession anywhere. We are not going to agree on anything because we are doing the job. But we have never expressed it or NPA, the regulator has never said or the oil companies have never said that we lack the capacity to be able to do the work. So anybody who comes in to abstract the job and for that matter give us cause to go and sit down in the house will be able to sit down in the house and no matter any persuasion we will never, we will never give in. For his part, lawyer Kwame Jantua, a member of the union, reiterated that the invasion of these Chinese companies to the petroleum business is a threat to the country and the economy. The danger is that they have built a refinery. They are going into haulage. The next thing you see, they are, they are buying uh, petrol stations. The moment they start buying petrol stations, forget Goyal. Because they would undercut the price. They are producing, aren't they? They will undercut the price. And if they undercut the price, definitely they will be able to sell more than any other person. What then happens? They take over. Once they take over, where does the Ghanaian sit? That's where we are calling on the president. And all those who, are, who can stop this should stop it now. Executive Secretary of the Tanka Owners Union of Ghana, Ignatius Koku Do there. Now, Ghana spends in excess of $200 million annually to import fish following the depletion of marine stock due to bad fishing practices and climate change. This, according to Deputy Minister of the Sector, Moses Enim, makes aquaculture the most viable alternative to address the shortfall. He spoke at the Blue Food Partnership Ghana initiative. Ghana consumes about 1 million tons of fish annually. The country imports close to 60% of its fish with some $200 million annually. Ghana's new aquaculture development plan aims to increase the country's fish farming output from 89,376 tons in 2021 to 211,697 tons by end of 2027, an increase of 136%. We need to tease out a plan for aquaculture because aquaculture, as I said, remains the most viable alternative to bridge the gap between the supply and the demand. The Blue Food Partnership Ghana initiative is aimed at leveraging science-based actions towards healthy and sustainable blue food value chains. The private sector-led initiative is expected to help Ghana to sustainably meet the increasing demand for healthy and nutritious food. When we talk about sustainable production, uh, the concerns about our current uh, fish feed cost and its implication on our bottom line is also an aspect that we really are working on as a chamber where we're doing backward integration, engaging on how our raw material uh, for fish feed is being produced and how we can assess it uh, in a more, um, let's say, low-cost manner. The initiative is to develop a roadmap to strengthen and ensure sustainable growth of the country's aquaculture sector. Because it can really be a business uh, that can bring people uh, you know, bring incomes, bring more food, food security, but also be profitable businesses. Global sustainable agriculture roadmap is uh, greater, decent pay, employment for young people, for women to be more involved. Uh. That was Eben Ejekum Boateng's report. Now take a listen to how the city is faring against major trading currencies and how some of our key commodities are faring on the global market. On the interbank foreign exchange market, where banks trade amongst themselves, the dollar recorded no price change and is selling at 11 cities 8 pesos. The British pound lost 4 pesos, selling at 13 cities 54 pesos. The euro lost 7 pesos and is selling at 11 cities 74 pesos. However, be guided that these figures will be higher at a forex bureau near you. On the global commodities market, price of cocoa is down by 2.4%, selling at $3,496 per tonne. Brent crude oil is up by 0.12%, selling now at about $93 per barrel, while the price of an ounce of gold is down by 0.49%, selling at about $1,916.
That was an update from the Forex and Commodities Markets. That will be all for Business News on Sunrise. For more business stories, please check out our website, 3news.com. I am Menu Afo. Stay tuned. Sports News is up.